reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up till now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for the good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. 
For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in the field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it to shore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as we get ready to turn our calendars to August this next week, I've reminded just how good summer is. There's lots of good things about summer. We have longer days and the sun shines longer. Hope we have freedom to go on vacation or pick up hobbies that we, we enjoy doing. And of course, uh, children really like summer because we have the break from school. And I remember growing up, I lived in the neighborhood with other kids living in the neighborhood, and uh, we'd often get together to, to play a game. And whether that was kickball, volleyball, football, really anything with a ball, we'd be able to find a way to, to play a game. And, and after we decided on what game to play, another important choice had to be made. How were we going to choose teams? So often we would line up and the two captains would pick out uh, their teammates one by one, calling each one by name. And just as, as a kid, there's a certain joy or like a pride that comes with when, you're, when your name is called. And, and of course, you're, you're excited to be uh, wanted to be uh, belong to a team that's bigger than yourself, and uh, and of course, if you're competitive like like my family, you're excited to be all united with the same purpose to beat the other team. And um, and it, in our second reading today, there's uh, Saint Paul makes it clear that God has chosen 
us. He has called us by name. And we heard, for those he foreknew, he also predestined. And those he predestined, he also called. This gets at the amazing truth that God knew us from before the time we were born. He's the one who created us and formed us into the person that we are. But St. Paul doesn't stop there. He goes on to say, And those he called, he also justified. When we had all strayed like sheep without a shepherd, how did God justify us? By sending us his Son to seek and to save what was lost, as we read in the Gospels. In the Gospel passage today, we hear about seeking and searching. As Jesus tells us three parables about the kingdom of heaven. First, he likens the kingdom to a treasure buried in a field, and then to a merchant searching for fine pearls, and finally to a net thrown into the sea. And in doing so, Jesus is revealing to his disciples the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, and how once it is discovered, the kingdom is worth giving up everything to possess. While Jesus tells us what our response to the kingdom of God should be, thus what is the kingdom of God? Our late Pope, Benedict XVI, answered this question by writing, The kingdom is not a thing. It is not a geographical dominion like worldly kingdoms. It is a person. It is he. The Pope continues, By the way in which he speaks of the kingdom of God, Jesus leads people to realize the overwhelming fact that in him, God himself is present among them. That he is God's presence. So when Jesus speaks of the kingdom as a treasure, a treasure that's worth selling up everything, selling everything to possess, he's speaking of the treasure of himself. And when Jesus speaks of the kingdom as a merchant, I think here too he's speaking of himself. Let's listen to his words again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, Jesus is the one sent by God the Father to seek and to save the lost. He is the merchant searching for fine pearls. And when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Brothers and sisters, you are that pearl of great price. And the price he paid for you was his own blood shed on the cross. Even if you were the only person on earth, Jesus still would have suffered and died to save you. While all of us are precious in God's eyes, I'd like for us to briefly look at a pearl of great price that's particularly close to the heart of Jesus. Being at the foot of the cross, St. Mary Magdalene knew the price that Jesus had paid for her redemption, for her justification. And how did Mary Magdalene respond to such a gift? Like the person who finds a treasure buried in a field, out of joy, she went and sold all that she had. When Mary Magdalene is introduced to us in Luke chapter 8, we read that she, along with the other women, provided for Jesus out of their resources. So in other words, Mary Magdalene gave up what she had in order to possess the kingdom of God, Jesus himself. And she did so even before the crucifixion because she had known his saving power when he delivered her from the seven demons that oppressed her. She gave herself to the one who first purchased her who told her in the words of Isaiah the prophet, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. 
And it was at the sound of her name, spoken by the risen Lord, that brought her inexpressible joy, touched with glory. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he in turn glorified. What is true of St. Mary Magdalene is also true for us here at St. Mary Magdalene Parish. God the Father has called us by name. He has created us. God the Son has justified us through his blood, seeking us out. And God the Holy Spirit has glorified us by dwelling within us. So like King Solomon, let's ask for this wisdom to, to truly know this. Because when we do, how can we not give ourselves totally to him who makes all things work for good for those who love him?